Hello, welcome back. My name is Jackie and this is Dream Ether, where we talk all things spirituality, higher consciousness, human evolution, the origins of humanity and beyond. All right. So I'm sorry, they're <laughs> testing things out. That is not the energy for the card for this reading. But let's go ahead and call in um, some protection here. Archangel Michael, thank you for bringing your protection and protecting me always. Any other of my angel spirit guides, I would like to come share a message. And any other <laughs> higher dimensional or multidimensional beings that would like to use me as a human vessel to share the message that uh, needs to be heard by those who need to hear it the most. My intention is always to connect with those of like mind, heart, and soul who are maybe uh, new to their spiritual journey or have been on the road for a little while, but I have um, intended to connect with those who need to hear it the most on their spiritual journey. So thank you so much. All right, spirit. What message do you have for us today? Today is April 4th, 4-4. Okay. Oh, all right. Justice. So there is this spider wow okay so i'm getting a lot from this card <laughs> let's just get into the the book here hopefully you can see that all right i'm trying a couple new things today okay um, so we have the Justice card, which is a major arcana. We have some justice here. We need some justice. All right, bear with me. Here we go. Okay. Justice summons us to accountability. This reckoning process is at the core of finding inner balance and truthful action. Justice is the ruler of equilibrium, reminding us that all of our deeds and actions must be weighed against the light of truth. <clears throat> okay. At this threshold, we are challenged to look deeply and honestly into ourselves, seeking to right any imbalances in our life. We are summoned to take responsibility for aligning with our inner truth. The Hall of Justice is impersonal and unprejudiced. It does not pass judgment. The demands it sets before us are not complex. It calls upon us to act through love and cooperation and to, to become acquainted with spiritual integrity. There is no escaping justice, and we and we will account for all, either now or at some future time and place. All right. Sweet Colt's Foot, also called Butterbur and Bob or Bog Rhubarb, is a perennial plant native to all of Europe. It was introduced to eastern North America, where it now grows wild. It prefers shady forests and damp conditions along river and stream banks. Sweet Colt's Foot has leaves large enough to cover the head, which lead which led to the Greeks naming its 
the Greeks naming it Petasos, which translate to hat plant. This plant has come has some of the largest leaves in the plant kingdom and can reach a diameter of three feet. So I'm assuming this is all of that hat plant. At maturity, if the flowers along the club-shaped stem form its into dry, feathery seed um, seed heads that disperse in the wind. On the card, the mature plant presents the pillars of justice appearing along the border and extending beyond suggesting the influence of the cosmic realms sweet colt's foot is a symbol of justice and advisement under its watchful eye justice shall be done the banded alder borer is a member of the insect family collectively known as the lo as the longhorn beetles native to north america it ranges throughout the west the larvae consume the wood of dead trees but this beetle does not harm living trees it is not considered a pest the body and long antenna of the banded alder borer are patterned with striking black and white bands so this is the banded alder borer so you have this the you have the scales of justice right here and you have the pillars of justice um here or wait no the pillars of justice is this you know whole tree right and then you have the sword of of justice okay The beetle represents the scale, and its black and white colors symbolize polarities or opposites, which must be equalized. All of our deeds and actions must be brought to the scale to be ex examined and balanced. The beetle is a symbol of rebirth and to a new ideal. Wait, the beetle is a symbol of rebirth, to a new ideal and of devotion. Okay, to a new ideal and of devotion, to the ways of the spirit. Beetles also represent intuitive abilities. Symbolically, beetles illuminate the skills necessary for making right decisions, discovering the ability to make proper action, and knowing how to trust in life as a process. The banded alder borer represents a higher, more balanced perspective. The black-eyed Susan is a flower native to the central plains of Northern America. So the black eyed Susan. I love how the card's right here, but I gotta look at it. Okay. Hmm. Black eyed Susan. Hmm. Through love and care. Okay. Over time, it has become a garden favorite. I'm gonna. Okay. So I'm gonna assume. Like a black-eyed Susan? Is this a black-eyed Susan? Similar to that. So. She wants to stay out. Okay. Let's get this going here. Okay, so. The Pillars of Justice is okay the pillars of justice i'm assuming this might be that actually this might be it the um fuck let's find out through love and care it has flourished and evolved into many colors and sizes the handle of the sword is the rud bequia flower okay see see okay the which is a symbol of justice. This is a double-edged sword of decisiveness, which assists us in discriminating what is true and uh, right. I like it. I like it. Okay, so Black-Eyed Susan. Is a Black-Eyed Susan this? I'm going to have to look that up for later. Ooh, I got like little, I got pollen all over my book. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hmm. 
Black Eyed Susan. I feel like the Black Eyed Susan is this guy. But he was talking about these leaves in the beginning about this um, bog rhubarb. And for some reason, I feel like when I've seen rhubarb grow in the garden, you know, this kind of feels like it. <laughs> Alright. So I kind of want to go... Well, that's all I can really say about that. So let's get some more information about this okay thank you spirit thank you whole spirit thank you my higher self let's call in my spirit guides and the archangels to come and help assist me in this message to share a message with those who need to hear it the most i work with people's higher selves and um spirit guides their spirit guides like to work with me um i do a lot of astral work that is a lot uh really um sort of uh, sort of natural to me so um if you are coming across my uh my page here my channel um you were probably guided here for a reason probably by your spirit guides um 3 3 on the clock 3 30 so um you know i work with a lot of ascended masters and um higher dimensional beings um, of the light so that is probably why you have been drawn to my channel because you have um, some sort of an awakening or an activation happening or, you know, to help deepen your activation. Okay. So moving to the next card is going to be the, okay. So I'm, I'm trying to remember how the Roman numerals thing works. So this would be six, right? Yeah, so this is the Six of Cups, I'm going to say. Six of Cups. Well, let me see what I'm getting from this card. So I see two cute little grasshoppers in looks. So yellows are the yellow. Okay, so the yellow. <laughs> so you should be really excited about this justice that's coming in because it's surrounded by joy. And um, maybe oop, that has something to do with this solar eclipse that we're coming up on because I've, I'm really tuned into the energies of the collective and that including um, also all throughout the universe. So when things are happening in the astral or in the celestial, I can feel that shit. So um, anyway, so this is going to be something joyful. This justice that's coming is going to be something that's going to be making you very happy. It's going to be happy, happy, happy justice. <laughs> I don't know why. Happy, happy, joy, joy, you know, Ren and Stimpy. Sorry, if you're a 90s kid, you'll get it. You'll get it if you're a 90s kid. And I don't know why I keep having this. Well, like I said, we're going to find out <laughs> how uh, I want to use this display and how, how I, you know, whatever. I'm just showing up, okay, guys? I'm just showing up. And, um... You know, we're going to figure this out together. That is what I'm here for. <laughs> to be an example of somebody that's out there just like you. You know, just doing what, trying to figure this out. Okay, so the Six of Cups is a card of renewal and new beginnings. We have left behind self-doubt and fears. And now we are ready to begin sharing. Feelings of generosity and an openness of the heart are coming from within. We are sharing and trusting as we engage with the world. <laughs> Even though I've spent a lot of time alone, uh, this is very... Uh, I know that there are people who are watching and there are people who engage. And the more people that like these videos, I don't really know how the algorithms work. I'm not really working with those systems, I don't think. I'm just doing it, however. And so, 333 on the clock. Um, so... If you would like to connect more with future readings, I recommend uh, liking my videos and subscribing if you feel called to, okay? Um, I find that the more energy that is shared, energetically even, is it is a action to the universe that you are uh, aligning or you're resonating with it. And it just kind of is a magnetizing tool, really. So... We are sharing and trusting as we engage with the world. This card invites us to be grateful for friends and family and to give generously with pure and innocent intentions. It suggests that now is a time for fresh beginnings wherever possible in our lives. 
The common green grasshopper thrives in wet regions throughout Europe. So we have a little bit of a European thing going on here. Um, and it is widely distributed, so you might be from, maybe you're from Europe. Okay. Um, and it's widely distributed, uh, hold on. All right, let's bring in my, <laughs> my higher self. I would love for you to come in and help me, um, just help me get my words right. Let me clear my throat. I might have to refigure this. Not that I don't like. Whatever. Okay. The common green grasshopper thrives in wet regions throughout Europe, and it is widely distributed all throughout Great Britain. This grasshopper makes its home among tall native grasses. It is considered beneficial in promoting diversity among the grasses because it does not thrive on one species alone. This protects the biodiversity of grasslands. This grasshopper is a most commonly green all over, although there are a few color variations in different environments. Common green grasshoppers symbolize New beginnings, growth, and, a, and youthful enthusiasm for life. Other symbolic meanings of the grasshopper include making new leaps forward, letting the inner voice guide you, and boldly moving with pride and courage into new experiences. The grasshopper encourages us to trust our own instincts and leap into new ventures without too much planning. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit, for allowing me to be the, um, you know, the vessel to share this message through. And thank you, universe, as well. This is also very much part of the universe. Universe, there's divine planning. Okay, so both the male... Okay, so it also says, trust your own instincts and leap into new ventures without too much planning. Both the males and females of these species sing when ready to attract a mate. They rub a hind leg and wing together to create a distinctive song. The song begins quietly, then builds to a crescendo, crescet, crescendo, crescendo, crescendo of great intensity before diminishing. Symbolically, the grasshopper carries the power of song and also represents the ability to use sound to alter consciousness. Whoa. So I definitely believe in natural healing, like um, bees, bees have a very high, like a very healing frequency. When I was in Maui this summer, there was a bee sanctuary that was um, right down the street. And every morning I could hear the bees, like the beehive, like all of the, all of them, you know, it was really magical. And then even just the other day, actually, I was sitting outside and I like heard this, like this... It reminded me of this Disney movie of Christopher Columbus when he's trying to discover America, right? And he uh, he gets, like, this swarm of, I, I don't know, I think it was something, like, more like a mosquito or something. But this, it reminded me of that. So all of a sudden, I look up, and I'm like, there's, that's, there's no way that that is a hive. It was a fucking beehive. Way up in the sky, and it just, um, it was just... I don't know, it was, it was like a huge orgy or something, or it was like a huge party, because some, uh, I guess the queen, when a new queen gets, um, takes over or something, however the bee world works, you know, they, they just tend to do that, but I guess it was a little earlier than their mating season, so it must have been, like I said, a crowning, so there might be some significance to that, um, you know, a lot of the spiritual work and spiritual initia initiations and crownings, if you will, that happen in the astral um, are starting to show up in symbolic ways on Earth. Like, like that. So, the low-growing yellow flowers we call stream or wood violet is common in shady, damp forest groves. Okay. It is one or more uh, than 80 varieties of wild violets that grow in North America. And there are even more native violet species in Europe. Okay. 
The stream violet has heart-shaped leaves representing the many attributes it symbolizes. These include modesty, virtue, affection, simplicity, and pure love. These are all qualities of the humble heart, which is a gate, which is our gateway to the renewal and new beginnings represented by the Six of Cups. So this is divine justice, okay? This fresh start that you are getting, this, this fresh start, this rebirth, this resurrection of your soul's awareness, this shadow and light you know what i mean this is very much this is uh the time to be here on the planet i really 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 believe that and it's also the time for us to to be to, to wake up so you know whoever you are you you obviously have a heart of gold in connection to the divine very intellectual and cooperative and co-existing you know what i mean together and not over like you know not like being greedy with mother earth fuck <laughs> i get a little uh spicy when it comes to mother earth right so thank you spirit what else can we have here about this divine justice okay all right divine justice the two of pentacles Ooh. okay so the two of pentacles all right let's see we've got a flamingo standing on the ledge here but he doesn't look like he's like you know what i mean Ooh. and also i see this infinity symbol that the um he's making with those like uh vine with those vines or it looks like crowns to me another i'm getting double crown energy again you know um hmm. My right foot is itching for some reason, so I don't know if that is, um, I don't know. Sometimes I pick up on energies, so, <laughs> that are not normal for me. Okay. All right. The Two of Pentacles is all about balance. Juggling the Pentacles illustrates the need to be flexible in our perspective so that we act in ways that are most beneficial to all. Observing a subtler meaning suggested in this card, we are, hang on, we see the interplay of water and earth. Okay, I was actually going to mention that because, you know, flamingos um, definitely live near the water. I mean, that's why they're pink is because of the sea, like the salmon, the salmon, the um, shrimp. Observing a subtler meaning suggested in this card, we see the interplay of water and earth. This suggests that emotions and other unconscious influences are present. It is our task to understand the emotional and physical forces at work. By acting with careful consideration and proceeding in a balanced way, we will master any situation. Divinely speaking, we are presented with the idea of duality. This operates as a fundamental principle in the physical world. We might observe how the forces of nature are in constant motion, striving to create a balance between polarities in the world of form. Excuse me. It is a worthwhile task to learn how to flow with the energies that work behind the scene, act accordingly, and strive to achieve a balanced state. Okay. The American Flamingo. I didn't know we had... I'm not going to lie. Okay. <laughs> Central America. <laughs> 
The American flamingo is identified by its striking pink coloration, black flight feathers, and black markings on its beak. The pink in its feathers is derived from ingesting organisms found in its feeding habitat. American flamingos breed and thrive in Central America. They range as far north as Florida, where they reside in coastal mudflats and lagoons. So a lot of marshy energy. <laughs> Maybe you're from the jungle? I don't know. Um, they range as far north as Florida, where they reside in coastal mudflats and lagoons. The symbolism of the flamingo includes balance and understanding how to maintain a state of balance. Graceful motion and migration. Ooh, some travel. The flamingo also represents the ability to master life's deep lessons as they emerge from emotional waters. We're very much in an emotional, you know, with having that full moon, uh, lunar eclipse just two weeks ago, almost. Like, we're still, we're still feeling it. It was like three times the normal full moon energy with the, with the eclipse. Okay, so the broad we ooh, la, la, la. the broad leaf cact cattail. The broad leaf cattail is a wetland plant that provides habitat to many marsh animals and birds. It is one of the most common plants in a shallow in shallow and slow moving waters, marshes and ponds. It spreads by creeping roots called rhizomes which must always be wet. Cattails grow quickly and can form dense patches in a short amount of time, sometimes taking over entire ponds in their quest for water. Damn. They can actually turn ponds into swamps and then into dry land in an effort to quench their irresistible thirst. The cattail symbolizes strong earth energy, balance and stability, as well as peace and prosperity. This is a great card. This is showing that you are balanced. Continue to stay balanced. Continue to stay connected to Mother Earth and the Divine. Another color yellow representing joy and green love. And Mother Earth. Mother Gaia. The, this old world vine covers... Okay, so this is English ivy, which is the vine that he is you know, juggling as the symbol of the magician or the eight, which we are in the year of the eight. Okay. Uh, it's funny because it's called the Hendera Helix and the Helix, you know, uh, okay. Very interesting. Like the Caduceus, like the snake, you know, the Kundalini. There's a lot of the Kundalini awakenings happening, um, sp spontaneously and, um, consciously all over the world okay the old world vine covers the walls of castles and cottages alike and is widespread throughout its native range from europe to western asia a ground cover that grows with great vigor and climbs by aerial roots it travels up walls trees rocks fences and anything in its path the english ivy is a host to a plethora of wildlife, the berries are eaten by more than a dozen species of birds. At least 70 species of nectar feeding insects are known to be attracted to its flowers, a much beloved plant. English ivy has traveled to gardens everywhere. It is, however, an opportunist and can become invasive if not kept under control. Careful how you use your magic. Be careful how you wield your power. Don't be, um, you know, be a, be humble. Um, the ability, so definitely keeping those things in balance. You know, like me, um, or like anyone, we all have the dark and the light within us. And, you know, a lot of us light workers are people who've come out of their darkness, realize that it takes the darkness to um, become the light. And so at the same time, when people talk about shadow work and things like that, it's basically um, getting to your, the things about you that you may have, you know, um, 
Okay, so I guess I'm going to go into the psyche lesson really quick about how this works. So say you um, you grew up in a society that, you know, for instance, your grandparents are from, you know, the South and they do not believe in, you know, same sex marriage, whatever you want to say. This is just an example. Then, you know, we that society wasn't it was it was hard then more so than it is now in different ways to come out with that because the social collective, um, you know, uh, acceptance scale didn't deem that socially acceptable. Now we collectively make that, um, our paradigm by, you know, collectively agreeing to the rights and things that we think are right and wrong right a lot of that has been a lot very manipulated and distorted and i won't even get into that but um basically so you know even as a kid with things like you know having vivid dreams as a kid and maybe explaining those things to your parents and and they just shushed them off you know so then you you kind of threw that you know that psychically aware you know innocent um part of you and you threw it into the shadow and and you do this because it's a way for your ego to protect yourself but then it can become like that's where you that's where when he when you don't face your shadow that's where your villain becomes you right so and you have to be accepting of your shadow you don't want to look at your shadow and look at it and and have any sort of animosity whatsoever because your shadow is you you have to embrace your shadow shadow work and embracing your shadow diving into the depths of your darkness and uh bringing it to light for transmutation that's all it is when you talk about like spiritual alchemy and that kind of stuff so i find that kind of significant right now as well being that we are in between this shadow and light um aspects with the um solar eclipse and the this this portal that we are still in between and today also being within another portal the 4-4 portal which is giving us more of a stable grounded um foundation to help us through this we've got mercury retrograde and we've got this serious intense eclipse cycle going on right now so today is here to usher us into creating some sort of safety and security within ourselves so give your inner self a like huge hug today. You know, try to connect with those aspects of yourself, your your inner child and your higher self. You know, your 3D self is involved because you are the mediator between those two energies. Maybe do some guided meditations where you listen to some music and you visualize yourself, you know, walking <sighs> You know, first of all, visualize yourself, you know, there are a lot of guided meditations right now, but I'm getting like, just visualize yourself walking through a forest and grounding your energy in, you know, almost kind of like picture yourself like Fern Gully, you know, like when the grandmother turns into the giant tree, you know, kind of just zone into that energy. And as you like picture yourself turning into the vines, picture your, you know, the branches of your tree going all the way up. And, and creating this cord between you and um, all the way up, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, and then once you do that, start to like, like, um, allow the spirit of your, your tree soul to, you know, kind of rise up outside of your body, you know, above the layer of the earth, the, you know, the atmosphere of the earth, you know, now you can see you see, you know, the sun off in the distance and, you know, maybe some planets farther out. If you can visualize that deep, you know, just keep ascending upward, upward, upward until you reach this giant cloud, you know. And at the bottom of this giant cloud, it's like a pink stairway with a white ascending um, staircase. Now go ahead and just take one step at a time and walk up that stairway um, until you get to the top and maybe pay attention to how many steps it took you, whatever. Maybe you're not taking steps. Maybe you're just gliding right up. You know, maybe it's a rainbow road for you that is providing this visualization for you. And maybe you are in the darkness of space. You know, it doesn't, these are all, this is different. It could be different for everybody. So what I'm trying to get you to connect here with is 
this connection to your higher self. So now you're with your higher self and you're, you know, you, you walk up to your higher self. You may see a um, image. You may see uh, the shape of some light. Maybe it's too intense for you and it's too bright and you don't really see much. But once you um, kind of embrace that light, allow her to bring you to a time um, with your inner child a time where your your ch younger self um, may have needed to hear a message from you that would encourage your little self that you were loved and you weren't forgotten and that you you know whatever it is for you that you struggle with from your childhood maybe ask your your younger uh your childhood self in this um greeting between you and your higher self to you know, like, or your future self, you can look at it like that, because in a way, it is, but at the same time, we're here, and we have that connection to all facets of ourself, so you're gonna go back in time, basically, and you're gonna go sit down, maybe have a picnic with your younger self, with your, you know, whatever it is that bring you joy when you were a child, maybe something that you, maybe something that even scarred you to the point where you don't even do this thing anymore in your life, so go back to that, and, and show, um, introduce, you know, your higher self introduce, you know, uh, this, this, this new version of you to your, you know, your inner child and let them know that they're there to protect you, that you, your 3D self, you in this moment are there to protect your inner child and that your inner child can feel safe now to be whoever they want to be, however they need to be, angry, sad, um, you know, whatever it is. You've got to get to the bottom of it before you can get, get over it. And if you're trying to go to this new earth energy, you really got to release a lot of that energy. And some of it might even be from past lifetimes, but we won't even get into that right now. So definitely spend some time in that moment with your inner self, your child, and, you know, your um, mother maiden crone your higher self, your, you know, your 3D self in this moment and, and an inner child. And then take that journey back, you know, all the way to the tree, all the way back into yourself, morphing into yourself, dancing in the field of flowers in the forest, however you want to call it, you know, and then um, coming down back through the levels and, you know, all of that, go, you know, Try that. See what happens. I wasn't really thinking. It. I didn't know that I would. Obviously, my higher self has something that they wanted me to do there as well. So I'm going to look into that. Okay. The ability of the ivy to climb and expand represents flowing harmoniously through life and its challenges. Ivy grows in a spiral pattern, which symbolizes development, expansion, and rebirth in the search for self. Other symbolic meanings include determination, patience, renewal, and opportunity. So you really have a lot of good things to look forward to. It may not look like it right now. It may not look like it right now. But I'll tell you that the energy that you are walking into, and you, you already are, this is it right here. Okay, the magician. You've got everything you need within you to succeed. And with the shift that we are experiencing right now, you actually have everything also in the material world to help you achieve mastery, be the magician of your life, your forest, your castle, your domain, whatever, you, your nest, your vessel, your temple. The Magician is a great card. It's a major arcana card. And also, um, you know, this doesn't just come for to anyone. The Magician is a, con is a conscious instrument of the life force. And also, the infinity symbol is the Magician's symbolism as well. The uplifted wing channels the energy from the heavens. 
and the wing pointed downward brings that energy into manifestation. The magician is the keeper of heavenly power. A highly developed mind and great powers of concentration give the magician perfect control of the four elements and any situation in the earthly realm. In the foreground of the card, four tools rest atop the mushroom, representing mastery of the elemental forces. The magician understands the sacred wisdom that is eternal. Through inner guidance and with great mental power, the integrity, the magician channels the divine. The dynamic energy present, presented by the magician enables us to raise our motivations to serve a higher purpose and focus our will toward harmony and grace. The magician also exemplifies the higher path, encouraging us to deepen our sacred connection so that we may be of service to the world. The magician reminds us that we have many talent, we have many latent talents and skills and abilities just waiting to unfold. Okay. So then it shows the Merlin Falcon, which is this guy here he's the merlin falcon is native to the northern continents encircling the planet it is a small falcon with powerful flying abilities the merlin has been raised for falconry since the middle ages prized for its great silent and speed and agility this is giving me two assassin's creed there again you know, a lot of you guys are going to resonate with being light workers. You have not, this isn't your first rodeo. You've been doing this for many incarnations. You may not know that. 444 on the clock. But I'm telling you right now, you have, no, this is nothing new to you. The stories and the folklore and the legends and the, you know, things that we see in our movies, those are real. And they're pretty much telling us our own story. But without being like, you got to get past all of the ops. <laughs> the magician also exam exemplifies the higher path, encouraging us to deeper our sacred connection so that we may be of service to the world. The magician reminds us that we have, okay, so back to the, I'm sorry, I, I went backwards. Okay, so the Merlin, the Merlin moves swiftly. Oops, but it is seen occasionally in habits. Okay, but it is seen occasionally in habitats that include open forests, grasslands, and coastlands. The Merlin moves swiftly with exact precision and control. The Falcon is symbolic of insight, clear vision, and unity with higher powers. The Merlin explores its world with mental clarity and a special ability to move between the seen and unseen worlds. This bird of action inspires us to hone our mental powers and understand our minds as creative tools to channel the divine forces. Mushrooms are, so the fly agaric or the fly amanita mushroom. So the amanita mushroom is also related to Santa Claus and tripping DMT, you know, I think that's the one. Mushrooms are considered symbols of good fortune and longevity, but this is no, okay, no ordinary mushroom. Fly agaric mushrooms were considered a sacred tool by ancient shamans and may be one of the oldest hallucinogenic ceremonial tools known to humanity. Used in sacred rituals, it allows healers to expand their mind and perceive deep mysteries for the improved welfare of individuals as well as the entire tribe. So I do believe that a lot of this stuff that's coming up, a lot of, you know, um, things like myself, I, I, I want to be in the healing arts. I want to be in... Uh, I want to help people understand how to take charge and power of their life um, and in ways that work for them through means of ancient techniques, traditions, and original teachings. Shamans and things like that, they do, you know, they do put themselves in a another um, astral, uh, yeah. So the Western Sword Fern, this is the Sword Fern here. My fern is not in my spot today. The Western Sword Fern inhabits deep conifer forests of Western North America, like Oregon. To thrive, it requires most stream banks and shady nooks where conditions are always damp and cool. 
The fern is a symbol of prophetic dreaming, magical powers, and riches. It also represents confidence, protection, dignity, and peace. The spiraling, unfurling fronds, fronds of the fern, like all spirals, suggest the sacred spiral of life with its complexities and infinite possibilities. And there was the spiral energy is definitely going on. And, ooh, I forgot. So this, this, <laughs> this eclipse that we're coming up on on April 8th is not just an eclipse. Because we're going to be 4, 4 on the clock. 44. 404. Okay, lots of force, lots of stability, lots of assistance here, okay? But it feels a little rocky, but trust yourself, trust in the divine timing, and trust in that this is divinely orchestrated, and it's also an inside job, meaning 